This is part 93 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to manage user claims, that is, add or remove claims for a user in ASP.NET Core using the Identity API. What is a claim? Well, we'll discuss what a claim is in detail in a later video. For now, you can think of a claim as a name value pair which can be used for making access control decisions. For example, we want to allow a logged in user to be able to edit employee details only if he has edit employee claim. We can use claims to make authorization checks like this. Since we are using claims to make authorization checks, this is commonly called claims based authorization. We'll discuss how to use claims to control access to resources in our next video. In this video, we'll discuss how to add or remove claims from a user. Consider this edit user view. At the moment, when we click this manage claims button, nothing happens. We want to redirect the request to manage user claims section, passing it the user ID for whom we want to manage claims. At the moment, we are on the list users page and when we click edit on one of the users, we get to the edit user page and here we've got two sections, user roles and user claims. When we click manage roles button, we are redirected to manage user roles action, passing it the user ID for whom we want to manage roles. Similarly, when we click manage claims button, we want to send the user to manage user claims action, passing it the user ID for whom we want to manage the claims. So let's flip over to Visual Studio. Manage claims button is right here in the card footer. Let's replace this with the HTML that we have seen on the slide. So when we click the button, we are taking the user to manage user claims action, passing it the user ID. Let's save our changes and take a look at the browser. Notice now when we click manage claims button, we are redirected to manage user claims action, passing it the user ID for whom we want to manage claims. But at the moment, we've got a 404 error. That's because within the administration controller, we don't have this action method. So let's include that now. Within the administration controller, right after the constructor, let's include our manage user claims action method. It receives user ID from the URL. Using it, we are loading the user from the underlying database table. If the user variable is null, we have not found the user. So let's display not found view. Now, before we do anything else, we have to retrieve the list of all claims for our application. These claims can come from a database table, configuration file, or a static class. For our application, let's store them in a static class and I'm going to place this class in the models folder. So right click and add a new class. Let's name it claims store. We want this class to be a static class. So let's include the static keyword and to store the list of claims, let's include a public static property. This property is going to return list of claim objects. This claim class is present in system.security.claims namespace. Let's bring that in and let's call our property all claims and initialize this with a new list of claim objects. Let's create our first claim by creating an instance of the claim class. There are several overloaded constructors for this class. We're going to use this version where we specify the claim type and claim value. In our case, the claim type is going to be create role and the value is also the same. Similarly, let's create two more claims, edit role and delete role. We want our user claims view to look like this. On this view, we display the list of all claims, the claims that we have just included right here. And if we want a specific claim to be added to the user, we simply check the checkbox, otherwise leave it unchecked. To carry the data this view needs, we need a view model class and it looks like this. We named our class user claims view model. And as far as this view is concerned, there is a one to many relationship from the user to claim, meaning a given user can have one or more of these claims. So to store the data, we have these two properties user ID 
and the list of claims and the type of this claims property is list of user claim and this user claim is again our own custom class and it contains these two properties claim type and is selected claim type is required as we are displaying it on the ui and this boolean is selected property determines if the checkbox is checked or unchecked now if you're wondering why do we need this constructor well we are using it to initialize this claims property with a new list to avoid null reference exceptions we're going to place these two classes within the view models folder first let's add user claim class include the two properties we need claim type and is selected next let's add user claims view model class In this class, we need the constructor, user ID, and claims properties. Now, in the administration controller, if we have found the user in the underlying database table, we want to retrieve all his claims. For that, we are using user manager service get claims async method and storing the existing user claims in this variable. In a bit, we'll see how we're going to make use of this existing user claims. And then we are creating an instance of our view model class and populating the user ID property. On the UI, we want to display the list of all our application claims. And if the user that we are currently editing has a claim, then check the checkbox. Otherwise, leave it unchecked. And for this to happen, we have to first retrieve the list of all our application claims and use a for each loop to loop through each claim. And if the user that we are editing has a claim that we are currently iterating over, then check that checkbox. Otherwise, leave it unchecked. So let me paste the code required for that right here. First, let's fix the compilation errors. Bring in this claim class namespace. All our application claims are in this static class claims store. So we are using a for each loop here to loop through each claim that we have in this all claims static property. And as we are looping through, we are creating an instance of the user claim class and populating its claim type and is selected properties. Now, if you're wondering why are we creating an instance of this user claim class? Well, that's because the model for this view is this class and this claims property contains the list of claims that we are displaying right here. And if you look at this property type, it is list of user claim and we need to populate claim type property so we could display that on the ui and the value of this boolean is selected property determines whether if this checkbox is checked or unchecked and that's exactly what we are doing inside this for each loop as we are looping through all our application claims we are creating an instance of the user claim class and populating the claim type property so we could display it on the UI. In addition to claim type, we also need to populate is selected property and we are doing that right here. And to determine the value for this property, we need to know whether if the user that we are currently editing has this claim that we are iterating over. So for that, we are checking this variable existing user claims. And if you remember, this variable contains all the user existing claims. We are retrieving them from the underlying database table using get claims async method of the user manager service. So we are checking if the type of the claim, you know, of the existing claim matches with the type of the claim that we are currently iterating over. If the match, then that means the user has that claim. So we set is selected property to true. Otherwise, the default is false. And then we are adding the user claim object to the claims collection property of our view model object. And then we are passing our view model to the view. So our obvious next step is to implement the view itself. The name of the controller action is manage user claims. So the name of the view is also manage user claims. So to the administration subfolder, let's add a new razor view. Click on web, select razor view, and the name of the view is manage user claims. Let me paste the required HTML. 
The model for this view is user claims view model because from our controller action that's what we are passing to the view function and then we have the form tag and we have set the method attribute to post because when we click the update button we want to update the data in the underlying database table using a post request and then we have the bootstrap card in the card header we are displaying this text manage user claims and in the card footer we have update and cancel buttons when we click the cancel button we want to send the user from this view back to the edit user action so we are setting sp action attribute of the cancel button to edit user and to that we are passing the user id and to get the user id we are using this model object user id property and then when we click the update button we want to submit this form so we have set the type attribute of this input element to submit and then in the card body we want to display the list of all user claims along with the checkboxes let's paste the required code for that in the card body we are using a for loop to loop through each user claim we have in the model as we are looping through we are storing the claim type in a hidden input field and then we want to display a checkbox for that we are binding the input element to the boolean is selected property and next to the checkbox we want to display the claim type so we are using a label for that and then we have a validation summary tag helper here to display any validation errors we might get at this point with all these changes in place let's run our project and see what we've got at the moment we are on the home page let's navigate to list users page and click edit on one of the users and then click manage claims Notice we are redirected to manage user claims and we see all our application claims. At the moment, this user does not have any of these claims. That's why none of the checkboxes are checked. Let's check a couple of checkboxes and click the update button. Notice we have a 404 error. That's because within the administration controller, we do not have manage user claims action that can handle a post request. So let's implement that now. In the administration controller, let me paste the post method right here. This method receives user claims view model as a parameter from the view. And the first thing that we are doing here is using the user ID from the model and then retrieving the user from the underlying database table. If the user variable is null, we have not found the user. So display not found view. If we have found the user, retrieve all the existing user claims and then delete those existing claims. Now, if you're wondering why are we deleting all the existing user claims? Well, to understand that, consider this scenario. Let's say this user that we are currently editing has got these two existing claims, create role and edit role. Now, we want to make a couple of changes. We want to remove this claim and add this claim. Now, if we don't delete, the existing user claims then the logic in the controller action to update the data in the underlying database will be a bit complicated that's because this create role is an existing claim for the user and we did not uncheck it that means we should not remove it this edit role claim he had it before but now we unchecked it so we should delete it and this delete role he didn't have this claim before but now we checked it so we should add it to the user so to account for this logic we have to have lot of if and else blocks within the controller action on the other hand if we delete all the existing user claims then the logic to add these claims is pretty straightforward all you have to do is check which of the checkboxes are checked and add those claims to the user this is the reason we are first removing the existing user claims. If there are any problems removing the existing user claims, we are adding this error message, cannot remove user existing claims to the model state. If we have successfully removed the existing claims, then we want to add all those claims that are checked on the UI. And here is the code for that. We are using add claims async method of the user manager service to add the claims to the user. Notice this method has got two parameters. The first parameter is the user for whom we want to add the claims. And the second parameter is the list of claims that we want to add. So we're passing the user object as the first parameter. And this expression right here is going to give us an I enumerable 
of claim objects that we want to add to this user. So from the UI, we don't want to add all these user claims. We only want to add those that are selected. And for that, we're using the where extension method and then checking the eSelector property. So this where method is going to return us, as you can see from the IntelliSense, I enumerable of user claim objects. And we want to transform that to I enumerable of claim objects because that's what this method expects as a second parameter. And that is done by this select statement. So we are creating a new claim object here and the select is going to return us an I enumerable of claim objects. And this method will add them to this user. If there are any errors adding the claims to the user, we are adding this error message to the model state. If we have successfully added the claims to the user, we are then redirecting him back to edit user action, passing it the user ID. Let's save our changes and take a look at the browser. We are on the list users page. Let's click edit on one of the users and then manage claims. At the moment, this user does not have any claims. Let's add these two claims. Click update and if we scroll down, Notice we see the two claims that we just added. In the database, these claims are stored in ASP.NET user claims table. Let's view the data in this table. Notice we see both the claims, create role and edit role. Let's make another change. Uncheck edit role and check delete role. Update. Notice we see the claims that we expect and the same is true even in the database table. In this video, we discussed how to manage user claims, that is, add or remove claims for a user. In our next video, we'll discuss how to use these claims to make access control decisions, that is, how to implement claims-based authorization. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.